from Bruno's Restaurant, very close to Hollywood. Welcome to the first annual USA Up All Night B-Minus Movie Awards. Tonight, we honor the best of the past year's B-Movies from USA Up All Night. Scheduled to appear, Michelle Bauer, Britt Bronsky, David Cassidy, Jennifer Christie, Gary Coleman, Roger Corman, Rhea Coyne, Mark DiCarlo, Julia Duffy, Diamond of American Gladiators, Francine Forbes, Billy Fox, Glitter, Jane Hamill, Sally Kirkland, Bill Kirkenbauer, Becky Lavo, Barry Martyr, Mario Milano, John Machita, Charles Nelson Riley, Julia Parton, Daley Pike, Linnea Quigley, Arlene Sorkin, Shadow Stevens, Brink Stevens, Toxie, Marcy Weiner, Hollywood Psychic, said they might show up, but probably not, Clint Black, Garth Brooks, Vice President Al Gore, Arsenio Hall, Jay Leno, Madonna, Nipsey Russell, Pat Sajak, Arnold Schwarzenegger, Frank Sinatra, Frank Sinatra Jr., Nancy Sinatra, Steven Spielberg, Sharon Stone, Vanna White, and Stevie Wonder. Gottfried, and this is my co-host, the lovely Rhonda Shear. It's the second night you've all been waiting for. The suspense has been building. The votes are tabulated. The food is cold. It's part <laughs> B of USA Up All Night's B-Minus Movie Awards, where we continue on in honoring those special artists and moments in our B-movies, movies you've watched and enjoyed. <laughs> celebrities and clips of movies as we find out who the winners are. And of course, we find out who you voted for in the Best Actor and Best Movie Awards. A great show and a great venue. It's so nice to be here at Bruno's fabulous Italian restaurant in Hollywood adjacent. And as usual, our arrangement with Bruno's allows them to continue serving dinners while we continue with our award show. This cuts the expense in half for everyone. And I'm still thinking about the guys in that band. It's getting me excited. I'm glad I have this podium. So many celebrities, so many awards, so many movies, so many dinners. How will we get it all in? I say leave off the garlic bread. We can cut right there. And we'll also be showing Vice Academy 1, one of our best movie nominees, and later we'll screen Vice Academy 2. And once again, we will be saluting the B-minus movie awards, the best of USA movies shown to you, our viewers, throughout the year. Here's a little recap of last night's awards given out and the events that took place right here at Bruno's fabulous Italian restaurant. That's applause. And the best actress in a B-minus movie is... Linnea Quigley! And the winner is... Wait, I haven't... Now 
announced him yet. Don't laugh. Um, Eric Estrada in Caged Fury. And the winner is Rick Bronski from class of Newcomb High to yes. Subhumanoid Meltdown. I was in bed with this fraud. She turned to me. She goes, go, 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 go. I got through with this fraud. She says, how can we go, 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 go. Humpty Dumpty, yo! <laughs> now, more of Meatballs 3, our best movie nominee on USA. Up! All night. Up all night! Oh! Baby, baby. <laughs> so sit back, grab a snack, scratch yourself. And enjoy the B minus movie awards and best movie nominee, Vice Academy One on USA Up All Night. We are watching Vice Academy One, a nominee for B minus movie of the year, and we are bringing you the USA Up All Night B minus movie awards. If you're hungry and like awards, this is the place to be. But stay away from the veal. It's a little on the salty side. Now, special effects are very important in a movie. Without special effects, we would just have effects that are not special. With that in mind, here to present the award for best special effects in a B movie is actress and host of Hollywood Insider on USA Network, Sean Southwick. know that cars don't fly and, and people don't disappear into thin air and milk duds don't really cost nine dollars except at the movies. <laughs> Why? So that the audience can sit there and see cars fly and, and people disappear into thin air and not think about hey how they just got ripped off at the concession stand. <laughs> Ah, yes, special effects. And the nominees for best special effects in a B-movie are... Alien High. Class of Newcomb High 2, Subhumanoid Meltdown. Don't bet on it, sucker. And Revenge of the Teenage Vixens from Outer Space. <laughs> and the winner is... Class of Newcomb High 2 Subhumanoid Meltdown. Accepting the award on behalf of our winner, Mr. Lou Pinsky. I know the producers are very, very excited about this award, but uh, they're not here. They're returning a shorty pajama set at Bullock's before they go out of business. <laughs> and uh, they would be very excited and happy because I know that they're very special and these effects are special to them. Thank you very much for them. We'll be right back with more after these important messages. USA Up All Night's B-Minus Movie Awards will return in a moment. We continue with USA Up All Night's B-Minus Movie Awards show. Hold back the enthusiasm. Our next category is Best Special Effects Makeup. Without best special effects makeup, we would just have best special effects, and we just did that award. <laughs> to present the award for best special effects makeup is star of Night of the Living Dead, The Blob, and Texas Chainsaw Massacre, Bill Mosley. <laughs> Thank you. Hey, lick my plate. Oh, beg your pardon. 
the hideous face of Pinhead in Hellraiser, the talking plant of uh, the talking plant in Little Shop of Horrors, <laughs> the half-eaten head in The Terminator. USA didn't do these movies. They passed on all of them, and they're sorry. So we were left with plain actors and actresses with cheap Halloween costumes on. But it still counts as best, best, best special effects makeup and best speech. Uh, the nominees in this category are... Toxic Avenger 3, The Last Temptation of Toxie. I was a teenage sex mutant. Just a minute. And Chud 2, Bud the Chud. Is that Rick Mortis? And the winner is... The Toxic Avenger 3, The Last Temptation of Toxie. Oh, gee, I don't know what to say. Um, my skin takes well to make up, and uh, after 300 takes, you guys would be able to do the same thing. So I want to thank uh, Lloyd and Mike and Marty and... Uh, Brown and Gilbert. Thank you. Now back to our B-minus movie nominee, Vice Academy One on USA. Oh. Um. It's Gilbert Gottfried along with your Hollywood honey. And we are presenting the B-minus movie awards on USA up all night. To present our Lifetime Achievement Award, Best Actress nominee for Anna and Golden Globe winner, please welcome Sally Kirkland. Well, I've been given approximately three minutes to say what I want to say about a mentor of mine, Roger Corman. Now, is Roger in the house? Oh, good. Oh, good. <laughs> Um, so here it goes. I first heard about Roger from a film called The Trip. I don't know if you all remember in the 60s. <laughs> the Trip uh, starred Dennis Hopper and, and, and Peter Fonda and Bruce Stern. And a little known fact was written by, uh, um, um, oh yes, Jack Nicholson, and uh, directed by Roger. And um, I then got intrigued with him, and I became a fanatic on European films and discovered that he was the person that, in fact, brought Ingmar Bergman to us and Cries and Whispers, which won an Oscar and um, Autumn Sonata, and then on bringing in Truffaut, and um, um, the Adele H. movie, and Fellini, and Akira, I can never pronounce his last name, uh, Kurosawa. And I thought, here's a guy who's doing low-budget independent films and starting off Coppola. Did you know that Coppola was his assistant, as was Menachem Golan, as was Robert Town? They were all assistants of Roger Corman. Uh, Coppola directed Dementia 13, way before we all heard of his other films, you know. Um, Martin Scorsese, I happened to be at the screening of Boxcar Bertha, starring David Carradine and, and Barbara Hershey. This was also, I don't know, what was it, Roger, late 60s? Early 70s. Early 70s. And I thought, you know, who's this man that's discovering Coppola? Martin Scorsese. Roger Corman, director, producer, filmmaker in every sense of the word. In a career spanning four decades, he's presented the American public with an unprecedented 250 motion pictures and has directed more than 50 others. And he serves a very va valuable component of making movies. He gives young people the chance to function. His cycle of eight Vincent Price, Edgar Allan Poe horror classics earned him international attention. True terror is the soft, cold caress of the raven's wing. His long line of box office hits literally built American International Pictures into a major force in Hollywood. In 1970, he founded New World Pictures, 
which quickly became and remained Hollywood's largest independent distributor with blockbuster hits and foreign classics, including Academy Award-winning films by Ingmar Bergman, Francois Truffaut, Federico Fellini, and Akira Kurosawa. His discoveries have become Hollywood's elite. They include Francis Ford Coppola, Martin Scorsese, and Ron Howard, directing such actors as Jack Nicholson. For a ghost, she's a very active young woman. Robert De Niro, Bruce Dern, Sylvester Stallone, and Peter Fonda. We want to be free to ride our machines without being hassled by the man. And we want to get loaded. The list of names of people who are too rich to be here today because of what Roger did for him is huge. In the 80s, Corman sold New World, using the proceeds to produce and distribute bigger budget films for his new company, Concord Pictures. I certainly didn't know when I first began to be associated with Roger and walked on the lot that I'd be walking onto a place where films were produced year-round. When you walk into his studio, you see that people there care passionately about film and that they grow and develop in ways that keep this town vital, and all of that is due to this man who stands on the stage today. Here's a man who has a brilliant eye for talent, be it as directors, writers, um, actors, and then he himself has directed 50 films, produced 256 films. So it's with great honor that I give him this award, my mentor, Roger Corman. This is actually called the Corman Krabby. I imagine that Rhonda, every year from this point on, will give it to um, another person in honor of Roger. Who knows? But please say a few words, Mr. Corman. Thank, Thank you, you Sally. Uh, Sally, I might mention, uh, was very successful for us in, uh, in starring in the picture in the heat of passion a year ago. It's been so successful. Uh, she doesn't know it yet, but we're about to make an offer for her to do in the heat of passion part two. <laughs> In regard to this, which is based upon one of my first films, I think the person I should thank is Barbara Boyer, my ace assistant at the time. I said I want to make a film on my standard 10-day schedule on about a seventy or $80,000 budget, and it's going to be a science fiction picture in which a giant monster, mutated of course, uh, by atomic explosions in the Pacific, uh, rises to the surface. And I'm thinking of making it a giant crab or a giant lobster. And I said, what do you think, Barbara? And she said, lobsters are too delicious. Make it a giant crab. <laughs> this led to Attack of the Crab Monsters and the Crab Award. <laughs> I want to thank everybody here and particularly of the USA Network. I appreciate it very much. Thank you. The first annual USA Up All Night B Minus Movie Awards will continue after these messages. The first annual USA Up All Night B Minus Movie Awards is brought to you by Baby Ruth. If it didn't look so funky, it wouldn't taste so fine. Welcome back to USA's Up All Night's first annual B-Minus Movie Awards. How do you say what's the best movie? Why is one movie better than another? That's why we had you, the audience, vote for our next award, Best Movie. We wanted this award to come from you. You called us with your choices, and we tabulated your votes. So if you want to complain to anyone because you don't like who won, then call yourself and tell yourself what a piece of <laughs> you are. <laughs> and remember to charge yourself 95 cents a minute when you're screaming at yourself 
because it's you who voted for this. <laughs> Presenting the award for USA Up All Night's Best B-Minus Movie Award is actor, international pop star, and recording artist, David Cassidy. <laughs> Thank you, Gilbert. Rhonda. You know, there are so many great movies to choose from. If you had to see all of our nominated movies in the theater, seven bucks cost you $35. Plus $35 for your date. And another $200 for snacks, soda. Snacks and soda. And uh, think about it, we saved you at least $275. Come on. <laughs> I ask you, isn't that what USA Network is all about? <laughs> it's so frightening. Where's my agent? <laughs> the nominees for the best movie are. I'm getting to that. Nominees for the best movie are... Meatballs 3. Oh, my God. Are you a virgin? I've never made it with one of those before. The Toxic Avenger 3. The Toxic Avenger is back. Better than ever. The Toxic Avenger's back. He's a real man. And Vice Where's Academy 1. We're students at the Vice Academy. The Academy? The Academy? <laughs> huh? <laughs> How about you, but I'm, I'm trembling. <laughs> and the winner is... Oh, yes! Vice Academy. Accepting the award is director and producer Rick Sloan. Um, well, I almost have to be serious here because to win this one, people did have to spend 95 cents a minute and they could have called a sex line, so. Um, <laughs> I do want to thank my fans. We will answer all your fan mail, and we really do get it, for those of you who are thinking that part is a joke. But um, thank you, everyone. It's been a good night. Thanks. Now, back to Vice Academy One, our B-minus best picture of the year on USA Up All Night. to the B-minus movie awards on USA Up All Night. Our next award is for the best pre-facial surgery performance. And to present this award, please welcome entertainment journalist from E! Entertainment Television, Arthel Neville. Thanks, guys. All right, hold your horses. I have a little poop scoop for you tonight, okay? Clark Gable's ears were too big. Carol Burnett didn't like her chin. And, well, David Brenner, he looks like Barbra Streisand. <laughs> yes, folks, for years, actors have altered their looks because, let's face it, when you were up there, in front of the, all of those people, millions, we're talking millions of people on screen, and you know how y'all are, you talk about everybody? Anyway, these actors want to put their best feet forward. So, the nominees for best pre-facial surgery performances are... <laughs> Rhonda Shear in basic training. Hey, I love your costume. Hey. <laughs> Judy Landers in I Was a Teenage Sex Mutant. Ah. I've had that on for so long, I forgot how good it feels to be out of it. And Jamie Barr in Happy Hour. But 
Were my eyes deceiving me, or did Wanda Rhonda Shear have, uh... Was her hair brown? Oh. I thought that was real. Her boobs are real, though, she tells me. Anyway, the winner is Miss Rhonda Shear in basic training. <laughs> Best boobs in New Orleans, by thank the way. Thank you. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> I am so surprised because you really do like me. You really, really like me. I'm... I have so many people to thank. This is. Uh, be, be quiet, Gilbert. This is my time. Wait. Um. Uh, wait. What, I, like I'm, I'm going to so, interrupt. No, wait, no. Well, I just happen to have a little speech here. <laughs> Let me start first by congratulating all the people I was up against, and especially their noses. <laughs> With my old nose, I, I had to go out for parts, you know, against, uh, you know, Barbara Streisand and, and Carl Malden. But now, thanks to my doctor, who recently fled to Costa Rica, and my hairdresser, Waleed, my nose has shrunk, and my hair and career has just taken off and gotten bigger. <laughs> thank you so much. I, I really appreciate this. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, don't worry, Rhonda. No one's looking at your face. <laughs> and now back to Vice Academy One on our B-minus movie picture, Best of the Year, USA, up all night. <laughs> to present the award for Best Belching Performance in a B-movie, <laughs> B-movie queen and star of Vice Academy series Marked for Murder and many others, Jane Hamill. Quite frankly, if you suppress a belch, it's got to come out somewhere, and that's a completely different award. <laughs> so, <clears throat> let's get on with the nominees for Best Belch in a B-movie. They are... The girl in the vowels. <laughs> Otto in Zoo Radio. What's today's topic, you mean? <laughs> Fear burps. And Ms. Shepard in Happy Hour. <laughs> and the winner is. Got to plan ahead for these things. Ms. Shepard in Happy Hour. Accepting the award on behalf of our winner, Mr. Lou Pinsky. This award means a lot to her, and it will go in her underwear drawer, along with her other precious valuables. Thank you very much. For Stay tuned for more when we return. Yeah. The first annual USA Up All Night B-Minus Movie Awards is brought to you by Baby Ruth. If it didn't look so funky, it wouldn't taste so fine. It's me, your B-Movie bunny on USA Up All Night with the B-Minus Movie Awards. As you know, many people make up a movie. Crowd shots, riots. These are all important in a picture. That's why we salute the extras. Because without the extras, we would have nobody to pay $15 a day and feed box lunches to. <laughs> to present the best extra award is a familiar television face. She's an actress from Different Strokes and Benson, as well as co-anchor for NFL Today. Please welcome Jane Kennedy Overton. The nominees for Best Extra in a B-Movie are... The Rollerblade Guy in the Malibu Bikini Shop. The Dancer in the Yellow Shirt in State Park. And the Necking Tuber Girl in Meatballs 3. You just can't wait to find out who the best extra is, right? 
And ladies and gentlemen, the winner of the best extra is, what's his name from the rollerblade guy from that movie he did? <laughs> Accepting the award on behalf of our winner, Mr. Lou Pinsky. I have known what's his guy for a long time. He's very excited. He could not be here tonight. He thank you very much for him. Your turn. And now back to Vice Academy One. Yeah. <laughs> we continue with USA Up All Night's B Minus Movie Award Show. Now many of you are saying. What is dialogue transformation? I don't know, but maybe our next presenter does. I hope someone does. So to present this very important award, please welcome actor and the world's fastest talking man, John Mashida. Thank you very much, uh, Gilbert and Rhonda. You know, this is such an important category. I, re I really wanted to go through it fast because I know it's late and everyone wants to get to the conclusion of the movie, but I'm going to really slow down because it's really important. Now, I'll tell you what dialogue transformation really is. It's been around in Hollywood for years. Originally, it started out in silent films when the actor's mouth would move and no sound would come out. <laughs> then, Ooh, the Japanese get a hold of it. And they had the actors move their mouth and then the sound came out a second later. <laughs> you know those movies? Now, with the advent of technology, the actor's mouth moves and the sound still comes out a second later, but now it's called a glitch. So the nominees for best dialogue transformation in a B movie are... The Invincible One. That job you got. How long you had it? Is it eight years or even ten years? I know one thing. You work damn hard. Fist of White Lotus. <laughs> well then, you still feel the wind? Well, uh, not so much. <laughs> enough, 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 enough. That's too drafty. Super Ninjas. Sorry, I lost. I'm unworthy. That's nonsense. Losing's not unusual. And return of the master killers. You thugs, you think you're brave, stealing our wages and fooling with our women. Boy, I think you're absolutely agree. I mean, it's just incredible competition in that category. I mean, I, I, I'm glad I didn't have to vote on this because I never would have been able to make my up on my mind. But anyway, the winner is... The Invincible One! Oh, congratulations! Uh, Kino Hirameno, Honey Honey Wolf, accepting the award once again is Lou Pinsky! I have known the Invincible One for a long time. <laughs> this is truly a big event in his life, and he wanted to be here, but the truth is he's driving somebody to the airport, and then they have an audition. Thank you for the invincible one. This is very important, man. Thank you. Hi, we're splitting the mics. Here we are sharing the mics. Well, there you have it. Vice Academy won. Winner of Best B Movie of the Year is over. But stay tuned for more of USA Up All Night B-Minus Movie Awards and Vice Academy 2, which is almost like Vice Academy 1, but with a different Roman numerals and no awards. I've seen both Vice Academies, and let me tell you, they're different. Now, let's get rolling with Vice Academy 2 on the B-Minus Movie Awards on USA Up All Night. The first annual USA Up All Night B-Minus Movie Awards is brought to you by Baby Ruth. If it didn't look so funky, it wouldn't taste so fine. Welcome back to USA Up All Night. I'm Gilbert Gottfried, and we're going to get right back to the movie in just a moment. But first, a very special award paying tribute to those that have been left out. We bring to you the best actor or actress cut from a picture. To present this award, please welcome entertainment journalist for current affair, 
Jeannie Wu, and Hollywood gossip columnist and illegitimate granddaughter of Hedda Hopper, Marcy Weiner. I'm not the head of Hopper one, I'm Jeannie Wolf. And, you know, I don't know if we should be making fun in this award. Being cut from a movie can be a very traumatic experience for the rest of your life. You've got to answer questions to interviewers like me about why you didn't make it. Remember years ago when Kevin Costner got his big break in The Big Chill? All of his lines were cut. All that was left of him in The Big Chill was that scene where his dead body was being dressed for the funeral. So what you should remember is that each nominee tonight has one thing in common with Kevin Costner. They all were cut out of the picture. You know, they all ended up on the cutting room floor. I mean, all that hard work and preparation and rehearsing only to be dumped in the garbage can along with the empty Snapple bottles. So tonight, we honor them. You may be out of the picture, but you're still in our hearts. The nominees for Best Actor or Actress cut from a picture are... Hervé Villachez sitting in the back seat behind the box in Cannibal Women in the Avocado Jungle of Death. The Piranha Women probably figured that the problems that arise between men and women naturally in any relationship are best solved by ritualized killing. Ed O'Neill of Married with Children in the Porta Potty in Cave Girl. <laughs> Esther Williams swimming off to the right in a nymphoid barbarian in Dinosaur Hell. And George Burns up there being prayed to in Rollerblade Warriors taken by force. And here's this holy messenger from that mystic order who's my protector on this pilgrimage. You got the winner? I'm so excited because, you know, I can relate to this. I've been cut from a few pictures myself, so I can certainly relate. Sometimes it's not so bad. <laughs> You're right in these pictures. You're right. Anyway, I'm so excited. I can't wait. And the winner is Esther Williams from A Nymphoid Barbarian in Dinosaur Hill. <laughs> Unfortunately, Esther is unable to be here tonight. But accepting the award is Lou Pinsky. The ever popular Lou Pinsky. <laughs> I have known Esther my whole life. She really wanted to be here, but she was cut from the program. But uh, I'm sure she's going to be very happy. I'll see her when I'm swimming later. Thank you for Esther Williams. Thank you, Esther. with more awards and this one is an exciting one best end credits in a B movie yeah end credits on a movie are very important they kill at least five minutes and allow the audience to think they're getting a 90 minute movie when they're only getting an 85 minute movie and they cost nothing plus we can say Thanks to all those people we milked during production and were obligated to. <laughs> Presenting the award for best end credit. What was she laughing at? From Hollywood Chainsaw Hookers and Sorority Babes at the Slime Bowl Bowlerama is the movie queen, Michelle Bauer. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Well, yes, indeed, the end credits are important, and it gives the audience something more to watch and hear while they're walking out of the theater. That catchy little turn, the blur of the names, the grips, best boys, the payroll people, and they're all up there on the screen while the audience is just walking out on them. So, the best end credits in a B-movie are nominees. Meatballs 3. A chili.
and the Malibu Bikini Shop. Oh, can't you see I'm only looking? Hey, look at me, I'm only looking. Oh, can't you see I'm only looking? Hey, look at me, I'm only looking. Boy, now that's a tough one. The winner is... Hot Chili! Accepting the award on behalf of our winner, Mr. Lou Pinsky. I have nothing else to say here. I don't know what else. I spoke to everybody, everybody about who was on these end credits this morning. In fact, we all had breakfast at a Qantas Club pancake house. The last time I saw them, they had paid the check and their backs were to me. I don't know where any of these people are. Thank you for all of them. That sums it up beautifully. If end credits were at the beginning of the movie, these people would be seen by the audience. Let's get back to Vice Academy 2. First annual USA Up All Night B Minus Movie Awards is brought to you by Baby Ruth. If it didn't look so funky, it wouldn't taste so fine. Academy 2 is over and just part of your lives now. And so is this award show. We've had fun and good times and a lot of food, and only Bruno's has to deal with the insurance problem. 